So, uh, you know, an age old um, view of critical thinking and creativity used to be that, that there's separate dimensions, that, that there's critical thinking, there's creativity, that one is rigorous and one is kind of spontaneous, and one is, uh, you know, logical, sequential, and the other is this. And, and um, so for a while we've been saying, well, that's actually not true, they actually overlap. Now I actually would say to you, um, just to be a little provocative, we're not even sure there is any such thing as creative thinking. Uh, and let me explain that. Is there creativity? Absolutely. But when we say there's critical thinking and creative t thinking, we seem to be implying that there's two different parts. And so from a neuroscience lens, there's no part of the brain devoted to creativity. If I ask you to generate some creative ideas and I watched your brain in an MRI scan, you will not see a particular part of the brain light up. You will actually see the frontal lobes light up, which is the part of the brain where decision making, goal setting, what we would attribute to crit critical thinking lies. That creativity is in fact good quality thinking. There's two steps in creativity, one that was distinguished. One is the fluency, just the generation of, of new ideas. But then the second step is, so which of those ideas have merit, which are most useful? So you notice, if I'm, if I'm not a critical thinker, how do I decide which of those interesting ideas we generated are helpful and most useful? So creativity, by its very nature, embeds, the, the two have to go together. I'll give you a quick example of a strategy to nurture creativity and how it uses a critical thinking. Students were asked in a grade six class, their challenge was to develop a poster, an anti-bullying poster, to combat, poster uh, to combat bullying in their schools. We want them to generate ideas that would help them create a poster that was creative. And so we used a strategy called synesthesia, which is uh, using the senses to help me think differently. And so we asked children, if bullying were a color, what color would it be? And I'll never forget this 10-year-old boy said it would be burgundy. And I said, burgundy? He said, well, Red is the color of the pain you feel when you're bullied, and black is the isolation you feel when you're bullied. And if you mix black and red, you get burgundy. I thought, wow, it came from a 10-year-old. Isn't my goal as an educator to close the gap, to give all children the tools that will allow them to be more successful? So if creativity matters, it's not about figuring out which kids are creative and which aren't. It's about giving kids the tools that will allow them to engage in creative endeavors so that all kids are more, more successful when we invite innovation.